I am the Nature Hacker, and this is your world. So right now I'm bubbling, um, I'm bubbling CO2 into sodium hydroxide liquid. So uh, if you check the description below, I'll give you the recipe, but it's basically just distilled water with enough potassium hydroxide in it to um, saturate the solution until no more potassium hydroxide would dissolve. And if you have too much potassium hydroxide, it's okay. But anyway, I'm just keep bubbling CO2 through there, and you can see it's getting cloudy now, and um, that is a bunch of uh, potassium hydroxide linking up with the CO2 forming potassium bicarbonate. And now, if you watch, the uh, the bubbles shrink, so that's a good sign that the CO2 is being sucked up by the hydroxide. So here you'll also be able to see the bubbles shrink. It's happening less than it was before because the solution is starting to get... Well, the hydroxide's leaving and it's forming into uh, carbonate. So, uh, yeah. It was in an ice bath, which is important. So now you can see the bicarbonate uh, just collecting on the bottom of the jar there. So it took, it took probably about an hour for that to happen. So pretty much there I'm going to call it. And there's the bicarbonate on the bottom of the jar. And now I'm going to pour off that top solution into this bottle. And that's... Uh, um, there's still a lot of uh, potassium hydroxide in there, so I'm going to recycle this. I'm going to use this um, and then just add a little more potassium hydroxide next time before uh, doing it again. So we're, we're definitely conserving and trying to pour off the liquid without getting too much of the bicarbonate in there. So what we're doing here is just conserving as much as possible. We're not throwing away the excess unreactive unreacted potassium hydroxide we're gonna use that again next time so once this is fully uh, poured off here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash it with a bunch of ethanol that's right ethanol 190 proof Everclear which I'll show you in a little bit and so because alcohol can dissolve potassium hydroxide but it cannot dissolve potassium bicarbonate so there's my um, liquid that I'm gonna recycle and I'm gonna use that next time and so there's my potassium bicarbonate there. And now we need to get all the po excess potassium hydroxide out of there. So I'm going to use alcohol to wash it many, many times. I probably washed it like this um, and then stirred it. I probably did that um, 10 times at least, trying to get all of that potassium hydroxide excess to dissolve into the ethanol. And then I collected that ethanol so I'm not even wasting the ethanol and I can just dissolve I can just distill that ethanol and it will leave the um, potassium hydroxide behind um, and uh, I will collect the alcohol back so adding more ethanol and stirring and then pouring that out and then adding more pouring it out just washing in there I collected all of it that's all the ethanol and there's all the um, the water from the beginning there so collecting all the waste and we can reuse that, we can reuse that waste um, so nothing is wasted. The ethanol can be distilled and the ethanol can be recollected. And um, as far as just that water solution I pull, poured off at the beginning, that can be used as the base for next time. I'll just dissolve more potassium hydroxide into that liquid next time and then rebubble in more CO2. And the CO2 you can buy... Um, from a brew your own brew store, like a home brewing store, you can buy a, uh, a tank of CO2 for pretty cheap. I mean, it costs like something like 70 bucks, um, but then you can keep getting it refilled for only like five, uh, 20 bucks each refill. So. so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how to make potassium bicarbonate. You could also do the same thing with sodium hydroxide to make sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. So thanks for watching. I am Nature Hacker. Do work.